Hello and welcome to the Raisena Ideas Pod. My name is Ashok Malik. I'm chair and partner of the Asia Group's India practice. Uh, with me today is a very important and close friend of India, His Excellency Syed Badr bin Hamad bin Hamoud Al Busaidi, the Foreign Minister of Oman. Welcome to the Raisena Ideas Pod, Minister. Thank you for being here. Let me start with the first question, uh, the question that is critical to, to this addition of the Raisina Dialogue and to our world, really, decarbonization and moving towards a post-oil economy. This is an vital to global security and the global economy, but no country feels it more, perhaps, than Oman. And Oman has made an ambitious bet on renewable energy, on, on solar, or now on green hydrogen. Could you lead us through Oman's post oil decarbonization renewable energy strategy well thank you first of all for the opportunity thank you for inviting me i am absolutely delighted to be here to be in india uh, and to be among friends uh, the relationship obviously as you have alluded to is a blooming one it's a, a reliable relationship and i am really 100 percent sure uh, in relation to your question that India will, be, will play a major part and a key partner in the development of the post-decarbonization uh, era uh, with regard to where Oman really uh, stands at the moment. We have introduced uh, a very ambitious uh, target to reach uh, zero uh, carbonization by 2050 and uh, uh, tackling the various elements uh, of the sector of the economy uh, which will be transformed really from uh, the fossil uh, fuel based economy into an economy that is based on renewables and uh, this is the direction of travel and uh, we cannot do it alone it has to be in collaboration and partnerships with uh, global partners and most, in, uh, I think, importantly, is to really uh, harness the partnership with India, our closest ally here in this region, in this field. Thank you. Apart from decarbonization and renewable energy, the other area of focus uh, for India in the past few years has been the digital economy. Uh, it's got a fillip in, in the COVID period and the post-COVID uh, world, of, of course, when so much of of commerce and business and, and even living has moved to the digital sphere. And uh, on, in terms of digital public goods, the infrastructure in India is something India is quite proud of. Uh, I understand there is growing digital cooperation between India and Oman, mm -hmm. and there is a growing ambition to, to accentuate Oman's own digital landscape. Uh, some thoughts on it? Digitalization is going to be and is at the moment uh, a key driver for change and transformation. Um, uh, Oman is really embarking on a very, again, a very ambitious uh, process of digitalization. Uh, E-government, uh, digital, the digital economy is going to be the name really um, uh, of the day. Uh, and this is really, uh, I think it is also capturing the inspiration of our young population, the youth, uh, you find uh, digitalization nowadays uh, in every home almost. So this is the way to go. And uh, yes, uh, you're absolutely right. I think uh, there's a lot going on between Oman and India in this regard. I think there's a lot of uh, opportunities also are going to be uh, driving this, this aspect of the relationship, particularly when it comes to further innovation and, and further growth uh, uh, in the sphere of digitalization. And I understand the Indian UPI system, the Universal Payments Interface System, is, 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 about, happening. To, is about to it's happen. Happening. Yes. Finding yes. acceptance yes. Yes. In, yes. in Oman as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in our part of the world, or in your part of the world, maritime security is a perennial concern because you are so dependent on the sea for, for connectivity, for prosperity, and in, for, for living, really. Uh, the traditional security providers in this part of the world have been Western countries, Western powers, such as first Britain and then the United States. Uh, now, we live in a world where we'll have to work together. Asian countries will have to work together. India and Oman will have to work together. And indeed, they are to tackle piracy, to push connectivity, the more and more ship visits. Uh, how far can this partnership go? Oman and India share 
a common vision when it comes to maritime security. We have been a seafaring uh, country for so many years. Uh, the freedom of navigation is, is very important for trade, uh, for uh, connections, cultural connections, uh, for peace and security. Uh, what is really an uh, important principle to adhere to, and we fully support and share that, is the absolute adherence to the law of the sea and international law uh, to, to ensure that uh, maritime security uh, remains intact. Uh, and we collaborate quite intensively in the fight against um, illegal trafficking uh, through the seas. We command a very important uh, air channel, airway, which is the Strait of Hormuz. Uh, this is very key for global economy. Uh, and, and so uh, it, we have an extra really responsibility in maintaining the freedom of navigation through the Strait and through the Arabian Sea and the Sea of Oman and beyond. And India is a very important partner in this regard. Minister, uh, political relations with India have always been strong, but uh, uh, in recent years, Prime Minister Modi, of course, traveled to Oman, met the late Sultan, a person he had great regard for as a wise man of, of the Gulf and of, of, of global politics, really. It's been three years since Sultan Haitham bin Tariq uh, assumed the throne. Uh, of course, his early years have been interrupted by the COVID pandemic, which made travel difficult. Uh, there has been talk of uh, a visit by the Sultan to India to, to further our political relations. Is that likely to happen soon? His Majesty the Sultan is very much looking forward to his visit to India. Uh, and it is very much likely to happen. Uh, in the foreseeable future. Okay. Uh, we are working on the, on the mechanics of that and the logistics and the timing, of course, uh, that is still yet to be agreed between the two countries. So yes, indeed, I mean, uh, he is, um, uh, he is uh, on top of his priorities, uh, this visit, and we, we are delighted and excited uh, about re the realization of that visit in due course. And you are here, of course, for the Raisina Dialogue, but you were also here for the uh, the G20 ministers is meeting. Uh, the meeting, in a sense, was, saw a lot of agreement on a lot of issues, but, but did not see agreement on one issue, uh, you know, the war in Ukraine. Do you feel that the war in Ukraine has, has in a sense, diverted attention, unfortunately, from many other global issues, pressing issues, especially after the pandemic and in terms of, of the global south and, you know, the economic conditions under which many countries find themselves. What is the way out? First of all, we are really grateful uh, for the invitation to the G20 and thanks to India and particularly Prime Minister Modi for inviting Oman. Uh, we found our participation really uh, useful, beneficial, and there's a lot to learn from and uh, exchange ideas and knowledge. And, uh, and I'm really looking forward to following up some of the outcomes of these discussions and these meetings. So uh, yes, uh, the war in the Ukraine, um, unfortunately, uh, is affecting everybody. And it has diverted attention from the real issues that we really need to focus resources on, you know, development issues, digitalization, technology, innovation, mm -hmm. new energy, renewable renewable energy, and, and the like. Climate change uh, is is an important, uh, you know, challenge that we we ought to really devote devote a lot of attention to. I hope very much that uh, the war in the Ukraine will come to an amicable conclusion, uh, a, a, an end to it, and I really don't see any way out of it. Uh, except through a, a political process, a dialogue. Diplomacy has to be given the fullest chance to really find us a way out of it where both sides can feel they have won uh, uh, a win-win outcome of, of this crisis. Of course, uh, I think uh, it goes without saying that uh, any solution will fundamentally has to respect the rule of law international law, the UN Charter, and these are all important principles we have to adhere to. But dialogue uh, and a political solution has to be found at the end of the day. Thank you, Minister. Your, your adherence to international rule of law and, and, and whether it's the law of the sea, which you spoke about, or whether it's 
respecting a country's sovereignty is well noted and well taken. These are values India shares with, with Oman as well. Uh, since uh, I have moved from diplomacy to business, I need to end this with a business question. Uh, India and Oman have had people-to-people -people and cultural relations for, for eons, for decades, for centuries, really. I mean, they've been, we've all grown up on stories of fishermen from our country going to Oman or vice versa, you know, little, little boats, doors, and so on. Uh, but as we've seen with many other countries of the region, India's uh, uh, footprint has grown as we have gone up the economic value chain. Uh, do you see a situation when, when a globalizing India uses Oman as more and more, or Muscat perhaps, more and more as an a, a alternative business capital for Indian business, for Indian innovation? Uh, what can we do to make that happen? And which sectors do you think we should be pushing? Our Actually, I'm asking for free business advice. Yes, well, okay. our connectivity, uh, India and Oman, goes back, I think, for over 5,000 yes. years. I mean, we are just across the ocean. And there is nothing, I think, in my view, more important than ensuring the flow of people-to-people -people connections. It is important. You have a, a wealth of goodwill in the hearts and minds of the Omani population. We really share many things. Uh, we share even traditions, True. culture, uh, food, folklore, and there's so many similarities and compatibilities between the two sides. So with that background, I think the future is promising, I must assure you, and assure our young, especially the young, they are the future uh, in both countries. I constantly, uh, it's in my mind, how we can really facilitate uh, those connections among young people because they're going to determine our future, the future for both countries. Uh, so startups, SMEs, uh, innovation uh, ideas are all welcome. Oman is open uh, for your youth to, to really come uh, in both directions uh, and, and explore opportunities in this field. Wonderful. That is a wonderful way to, to end the conversation and hope for a mutually prosperous future. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. It's a pleasure. Thank you.